The Honourable Member for Grand Prairie Wapiti. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, for someone that was born and raised on a dairy farm, you know, my whole life, and then I managed the farm for 35 years after that, it, you know, on a dairy we had usually at least five employees or more, but the odd time less. And so I understand it, Mr. Speaker. I, I get it. And uh, uh, safety's number one, always was. You know, uh, in all those years we had one incident on the farm where uh, I think the guy was from a city down east and he smashed his finger, Mr. Speaker. He put his finger where he shouldn't have. But uh, <laughs> I had my I had my six-year-old son work there forever, never had one injury, Mr. Speaker. But he learned as a young kid what to do and not to do. So age doesn't mean nothing. It's, it's experience in the way of life. Uh, and uh, Mr. Speaker, I don't take this lightly, though. As I said, safety is number one, and everybody, all farmers, all farms support safety and improvements we can do to make farms safer. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's not about legislation. Legislation isn't going to make any farm safer. I don't think legislation will save one life. It's, it's about outcomes, Mr. Speaker, and how you can make the farm safer. Legislation won't do it. I mean, the previous speaker, you know, uh, quoted some great statistics around the country how, obviously, this legislation hasn't necessarily made other provinces any safer. In fact, Alberta's numbers stand up very well without legislation, Mr. Speaker. So I think rather than uh, legislation, Education is the best way to, to uh, make farms safer. You know, wh whether it's uh, egg, egg uh, societies or 4-H clubs, you know, we can help by, by putting there. And the government has given money to egg societies, and they wouldn't get grants unless they could prove that they had done work on farm safety and education around the country. So, I mean, but even all the education will never guarantee 100 percent nobody's ever going to get hurt on a farm. Uh, that's just what happens when you work out in an environment with, with uh, you know, unknowns. Uh, and, and, Mr. Speaker, I don't think any farms or, or not many people anyway would, would argue against the oh s as far as coming out if there was a serious incident on a farm. and. and God forbid a fatality, but come out and do an investigation and, and try and determine what went wrong and what happened so people can learn from it and maybe prevent it from happening in the future. So that piece of oh and isn't, isn't bad, Mr. Speaker, uh, uh, and I don't think anybody would disagree with that. You know, I, I think... Uh, you know, we, our government has talked about it for quite a few years, and everybody said, yeah, you talked and you talked and never did anything, but that's because we were listening to the farmers, and, and we would be brought legislation, and we would say like this, no, that's too far, that's too much, it's, and take it back. And I think we were getting close to bringing stuff forward, but we've been consulting with industry for years, and, and uh, you know, whether it was the Cattle Feeders Association or different associations that actually run, you know, the feedlots and, and have input. So we've been taking that input and, yeah, maybe we should have done something sooner, but we were taking our time to get it right and consulting with everybody in the industry. Um, you know, it, and, and it's been said before as well, one size doesn't fit all. I mean, I think everybody wants uh, protection of farm workers. That's paramount in, in uh, you know, the big feedlots and in in big industry where there's lots of employees and, and uh, there should be a, a safety net or an insurance program to, to cover the family or the person if something happens. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean WCB. On our farm, we had uh, our own private insurance uh, uh, plan, Mr. Speaker, and then then we had WCB because we did some off-farm work for a while and we were forced to have WCB to work in the oil patch, so we got it. But I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, 
It was so much trouble and so much hassle and so much expensive that when I quit working in the oil patch off the farm, we canceled WCB and went back to a private insurance. And, and when they did have the one fatality on the farm where the guy got his finger smashed, uh, we didn't have WCB. We had a private insurance, but we didn't even use that. The, the young fella, I took him to the hospital, we covered all his bills, he, I brought him home. I bought him an airplane ticket to go back and visit his family in Ontario. We paid his wages 100% of the time, and we covered all his costs. And, and within a week, he was back on the farm and said, I don't like it in the city, I want to be here. I can't stand sitting around doing nothing. So he would start poking around the barn and doing light duty because he had his hand bandaged up. And, and we paid him the whole time. And, and uh, you know, it wasn't long he was back in full duty. I mean, his finger's a little gimpy, but it's still there and it still kind of worked. But, uh, you know, WCB would have been, you know, he would have been back to work before the forms got filled out and he actually got a check from WCB and he'd have suffered for a while without any kind of income. So WCB isn't the answer to everything. And, and I do know it's not fair. Uh, I, I know WCB has come a long ways in the last few years, and it's a lot, it's a lot better than it used to be. When, when I first was elected to the House as MLA that first few years, most of the complaints in my office, that's all my girls did was handle WCB complaints. And, and it was, you know, it wasn't a good program, obviously, but I'll, I'll give them the credit that in the last few years the complaints are down, so they must be doing a better job. That's, that's usually how you gauge on how good something's doing. If, if you don't get any complaints, it must be all right. But as we see this week when people complain or upset about things, then something must not be right in the mix there. So, uh, you know, I, I think, uh, so like I said, with the, you know, oh and s and, and some insurance, it doesn't have to be WCB, but you could, could uh, make it mandatory that anybody with farm workers had to have some kind of, or have a level of insurance coverage. It could be specified. Um, you know, I think there's some good things that come out of, can come out of this, but as has been said before, it just went way too far, too fast, without proper consultation with, with industry. And we've seen that, uh, you know, I, now my office is jammed with emails and phone calls, and we've seen the steps of the legislature yesterday. Obviously, this isn't what the farm community wants and must not be right for them, even though people sitting in this house think they know what's right for the farm community and they don't know what's right for them. I, I, I don't agree with that, Mr. Speaker. Something's gone sideways here. Uh, and I think, I think the legislation could be broke down into four parts. You know, there's, there's too much in there. There's the Employment Standards Code, the Labor Relations Code, the OH&S Act, and WCB regulation. It's, it's almost like an omnibus bill with too many things trying to jam in there all at once. And I think if uh, we started out slower and, and consulted more and eased into this, uh, it, it could be it could be the right thing to do for Alberta farms and I know there was uh, uh, stuff said about I don't, and I'm not here to blame ministers or or uh, bureaucrats or nothing but I did go to the to the original briefing on this uh, on this uh, bill Mr. Speaker I think I was the only MLA no actually I'm wrong Dr. Swan was there uh, but. I, I, I got the information and in, in the, in the papers, and it says right in there the legislation would apply to your farm members. And down farther in number three, it says OH&S would, would apply only when children are helping out on the commercial operation of a farm, but that's when kids are working on the farm. It basically says that. So, so it was there in writing in the in the detailed briefing when this bill was presented so you know to say it was the bureaucrats misrepresenting it or who was ever misrepresenting it I'm sure the minister seen this briefing material before it was out there and, and knows what it said and I, I did notice it's been taken down off the website now Mr. Speaker so there must be something there that uh, 
wasn't quite right. So, you know, I, I think, uh, I, I know there's going to be a lot said over the next few days and into the night here, and it's going to be repeated, and I'm not going to repeat myself too many times. And, uh, you know, the, the member before me did a really good job on, on uh, comparing some stats across the country, and, and I think one, one serious incident or fatality, even one is too many. So we can't say we're good and we're happy with the numbers, but... Uh, you know, we'll do the best we can, and uh, this legislation, I don't know if it's going to save anybody on the farms, Mr. Speaker. I think common sense, education, consultation, and everybody working together is the way to get this job done. Thank you, Mr.